Hey folks, let's try some probability. The first thing we're going to look at is something called the complement rule. And the complement rule is essentially uh, what is the probability of something not happening. So um, take a look at the example that's described here. Suppose there's an 80% chance that you can get to class on time. What are the chances that you don't? Well, uh, if there's an 80% chance that you could get there on time, there must be a 20% chance that you don't, okay? At least in the world of only two possibilities, right? Um, now, uh, there's a fancy way to write this out. Unfortunately, the book has a little bit of a typo. Um, what they write is the probability of the complement of A equals 1 minus the probability of the complement of A. And they made a little mistake there. Um, there should be no, no C there. Okay. Basically, what the deal is, is the probability of the complement of A or A not happening is equal to 1 minus the probability of A happening. Uh, and uh, a, a way that I see it written more commonly, uh, certainly in high school math books, is the probability of A prime, that little dash next to the A is called A prime, is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. Again, A prime turns out to be the complement of A. So if, uh, so let's see here. So if we're talking about the complement, A prime is the, is, oh, here we go. The complement of A is A prime. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get rid of the, that circle real quick. So uh, let's take a quick look at an example where we can use, where we actually need to use this to do some math. One thing that I'd like to take a moment to point out here is the probability of anything happening, uh, the probability of any event, we'll just call it event A, is always going to be greater than zero, and it's always going to be less than one. And another way that we can express probability is in terms of percent. And we could say the probability of something happening is always going to be greater than 0% and less than 100%. It turns out that 100% is actually equal to 1. 100% is 1. 50% is 0 0.5. So anyways, uh, let's take a look at how um, we can use this knowledge plus the complement rule um, to answer a question. So, uh, da -da -da, observing that when we arrive at an intersection, the light is green about 35% of the time. If the probability of green is equal to 0 0.35, what's the probability the light isn't green? We use the uh, complement rule. We would say the probability of, uh, I could do lowercase g or uppercase. I, I, I kind of feel like uppercase. And we're going to say g prime, because that's the probability that g, the light is not green, should be equal to 1 minus the probability of just g, uh, of green, of that it's green. So we'll say the probability of not green is going to be equal to 1 minus, in this case, we know probability of green is 0 0.35. And so the answer to our question should be 0 0.65, also known as 65%. And that will be the probability. Either one of those would be good ways to express the answer. Now, I have to tell you this. Um, we're going to be working on some problems like this. And as much as possible, I want you to write out all the steps, not just the answer. All right, so. Um, we need additional rules if we want to be good at calculating probability. And so we have another rule that says if we're looking at the probability of A or B, we can do we can use a formula probability of A plus probability of B. Now, this is only true when there's no overlap in events. Um, and uh, and my if I recall correctly, in this chapter, we don't have any problems where there's overlapping in events. So so we're going to focus on problems where this works. Um, there is a trickier situation where sometimes we have overlapping of events. And when we do have overlapping of events, then then the this formula changes and we have to subtract some stuff off. Um, but, but for the simple situation, if it's the probability of A or B, we just add the probabilities together. Um, let's another quick simple example. So um, uh, we, when you get to the light, it's either going to be red, green, or yellow, three possibilities. Um, and we know the probability of green is 0.35. We are told that for this particular problem. Um, that is just information that we're given. Uh, suppose we find out that the probability that the light is yellow is about 0.04 or 4% of the time. 
what's the probability that the light is red? And the way we figure that out is we use the addition rule. Um, the probability that the light is, uh, let's see here, green or yellow, green uh, uh, or, let's see here, uh, I guess I'll do it the way they had it in the rule, that, that it's green or yellow, there we go, um, is equal to the probability that it's green. Uh, plus the probability that it's yellow. Okay, um, so we could figure out the probability of the light being green or yellow by adding the two together. And of course, that'll be a 0 0.35 plus 0 0.04, and that'll get us a probability of 0 0.39. And then to figure out the probability of red, we go back to the complement rule. And the complement rule would go something like this. The probability of red uh, is going to be, let's see, the probability, we want to know the probability of red uh, equals the probability uh, that it is uh, uh, not green or yellow. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure how, I think I got to do a parentheses there and do a prime there and then another set of parentheses. So we're going to say uh, we're looking at the probability that it's not green or yellow. Okay. And in order to do that, we do one minus the probability that it's green uh, plus the probability that it's yellow. And we already did that math, so we don't have to worry about that again. And then finally, we do one minus 0 0.39. Now, some of you folks, I know you're smarty pants, and some of you folks are thinking to yourself, Weingarten, I don't need to do all that writing. I can do that in my head. I, get, I got this. Um, but folks, there's something that I want to share with you, is that it's really important to develop a habit of writing out complicated problems because um, it, it is when problems become more complicated, uh, you must write them out in order to get the correct answer. Uh, it, it's one it's one strategy known as making a picture in order to solve problems. Okay, and uh, it's just difficult to solve complicated problems without being able to break them down and visualize them. So it's good to establish a habit even when the problems are relatively simple. In this case, we get an answer that probability that the light would be red for this situation would be whatever 1 minus 0.39 is. Um, I think that's, uh, let's see here, 4.4. The opposite of that would be 0.6. So I think this is 0.61. So we'll do uh, 0. 0.61. I believe that is correct. There we go. And then we'll take a look at something else. Okay, another important rule for probability has to do when we have the probability of this and this, okay? And uh, for some of you, I imagine what you're thinking to yourself is, Weingarten, you already told us about the or and the and, right? Fundamental counting principle. Well, and you're not wrong. The, the truth of the matter is, is that there is a lot of similarity between this rule and the rule we used for counting things. The only difference is, is that rule was for actually counting things, and this rule is for determining probabilities. Okay, so anyways, quick refresher. If we want to know the probability of event A and B both occurring, we multiply the probability of A times the probability of B if they are known. Now, you'll notice that we do have some caveats, though, with these rules that we did not have with the fundamental counting principle. For instance, with the or, we, we couldn't have any overlap, okay, uh, between event A and event B. Um, with, uh, with the and, it, it has to be true that the two events are independent. Otherwise, you cannot simply say probability of A times probability of B. Okay, anyways, with this idea in mind, let's look at an example. All right, let's take a look at a quick example for probability of this and that. Um, the probability that we encounter a green light is 0.35, yellow light is 0.04, and a red light we now know is 0.61. Let's think about your morning commute for the week ahead. What's the probability you find the light red on both Monday and Tuesday? Well, here's the thing that's interesting. Um, we're going to multi. We're going to go ahead and multiply them together. So what we do is the the probability um, that we get red on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to write it out in this way. I'm going to say the probability that we get red, and and I could use uppercase or lowercase. I'm just using lowercase for now. Uh, and red. In fact, that for that matter, I could probably put an ampersand in there. Um, if you don't know what an ampersand is, go Google it. It's fun. 
Okay, anyways, probability of red and red equals probability of red times probability of red. Okay, And it just happens to be that we're doing the same event, so it happens to be that we're using red twice. If we want to know probability of red and then green, we do probability of red times probability of green. Okay, just F FYI. Um, so anyways, uh, in this case, we would say, well, red is 0.61, so 0 0.61 times 0 0.61. Now, there's something that I want to point out that's kind of interesting about the result we get. See, whenever you want to find the probability of two things happening, it's always going to be less than the probability of one of those things happening. It's always going to be less because it's just less likely that both things would happen. Now, that's not necessarily true if the events are dependent on one another, but when they're independent of one another, then we say that uh, uh, you're going to decrease the likelihood of if both happen. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do 0.61 times 0.61 on my handy-dandy SAT calculator here. Uh, and it's uh, sure enough, it went down. The probability is 0 0.3721. Now, how much do you need to round to? Well, it depends on what the question is asking for. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as 0 0.3721. Um, or, uh, I, uh, and by the way, that is all the decimals. So in this case, I can use an equal sign if I wanted to write that as a percent. And I could say 37.21%. And either one of these answers is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and box one of them just to make the commitment that I believe that's the answer. I would love to see you guys do this. Write out your work, box your answer, make a commitment that you believe you know what you're doing before you try to submit an answer. That's the way to get good at math, okay? All right. Anyways, um, some of you are thinking to yourself, Weingarten, this is really very basic. Well, let's take it up a notch and start to put things together a little bit. So again, some of you folks are probably thinking that so far this video is pretty easy. You didn't really need to be listening to these tips and tricks. So I'm going to give you a chance to test yourself. Um, here's a question, and I'd like to see you answer it with the knowledge that's been given to you so far. Um, some of you may be able to get this, but I suspect some of you are going to realize, wow, it's a little bit trickier than you thought. Um, so anyways, uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you a chance to pause the video and try to answer the question. And then in a minute, I'll start to give you the explanation. All right, so let's talk about this. So what's the probability that you don't hit a red light until Wednesday? Hmm, how would we begin to approach this? Um, it's going to be much easier if we try to write this out. So, uh, first of all, probability of hitting a red light uh, is, I'm going to abbreviate that as probability of R, and probability of not hitting a red light, I'm going to abbreviate that as probability of R with a little prime symbol there. Okay, so uh, so what's the probability that you don't hit a red light until Wednesday? Well, I think, well, first of all, I have a question for you. Um, do you believe that this is related to, is this going to be an and probability or an or probability? Hmm? Hmm? Maybe I'll give you a chance to stop and try to answer that question. Okay, so hopefully you've answered it. Um, I believe this is going to be an and probability. So we're going to do something like probability of not hitting a red and not hitting a red. In other words, not hitting a red on Monday and not hitting a red on Tuesday. And by the way, I'm assuming that like the previous questions, we have a work week of Monday through Friday. And if I didn't convey that before, I apologize. Uh, and then finally on Wednesday, we do hit a red light. So and on Wednesday, we hit a red light. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that this is what happens. I'm not saying that this is the only way it could happen. I'm just saying that if we want to answer this question, what's the probability you don't hit a red light until Wednesday, this is how you would write it out. And by writing it out in this way, it becomes much more straightforward about how to do the math and how to get the answer. So we're going to say this is the probability of not getting a red uh, times the probability of not getting a red times the probability of getting a red light. And uh, uh, the numbers are, uh, let me take a look. Remember we said the probability of getting a red was 0.61. And we even went on, we even said the probability of not getting a red was 0.39. So we know both of those. So yay. 
Okay, so um, so not getting, let's see, not getting a red is 0.39 uh, times not getting a red is 0.39 times getting a red is 0.61. And if we multiply those all out, then we'll go ahead and get an answer. And I'll go ahead and let you multiply it out and get an answer, and you're going to give it to me. Now, here's another tricky variation uh, of a probability question that, it, that you could answer based on the rules that I've given you so far. Uh, so the question is, what's the probability that you'll have to stop at least once during the week? This, I love this question because it requires several things. Um, first of all, uh, are they, do we need to know about the probability of getting a yellow or a green or a red? That, that's an interesting question right there. Start by asking yourself, do you really understand the question and all the little bits and pieces about it? Okay. Um, and uh, obviously, what's the probability that you'll have to stop at least once? Well, it looks like we're concerned with what's the probability of getting a red or, or again, not a red, right? So uh, what's the probability you have to stop at least once during the week? Well, that's where it gets tricky is the at least once during the week. For you folks that think you really understand this stuff, I would love to see you pause the video and try to get the answer yourself on your own right now. Now, um, for the rest of us who would like to see the technique for doing this, I'd like to explain, okay? First of all, there's some tricks to this. See, the probability that you have to stop at least once is really, really complicated, okay? Um, uh, first of all, let's say that you say, well, the, uh, what about the pro I'm going to forget about the probability. I'm just going to write either not red or red, and you and I are going to assume that this is the probability of not red and this is the probability of red, okay? Because I want to be able to, I want to finish writing this without taking another 20 minutes. So um, what we're saying is stop at least once means that at least once during the week you'll get a red light. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to say I get a red, and then I get four not reds. Okay, so not red, not red, not red, not red. Okay, and one might think to themselves, you might pat yourself on the back and be rather pleased with yourself and say, well, it's simply going to be, you know, probability of red, which I think is 0.61 times 0.39 to the fourth power. Done, right? Wrong. Because all it says is what's the probability you have to stop at least once during the week. So the truth is, is maybe you don't stop until Tuesday. Okay, so no red on, tu on Monday, and then red on Tuesday, and then no red, and no red, and no red. That's another way that this could happen. Just like with the fundamental counting principle, if we want to calculate the probability of something happening, we need to know exactly how many ways the darn thing could happen, just like when rolling dice, right? Um, if I want to know what's the probability of rolling an even number when I roll a die, I have to know how many even numbers there are on a die. So, um, so it gets a little bit tricky figuring out all of these different probabilities. Um, and uh, let's see, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I, I guess it's not that bad because I really only have to write it out five different ways, right? I could write it again and again and again, but then the problem is I got to do the calculation with all these things. I want to show you a little trick and there's an easier way. And, uh, and again, if you think you know what you're doing and you want to try it on your own, if, you, if, I've give, if I've stimulated something in your brain, go ahead and stop the video and see if you can figure out the easier way. If you can't figure out the easier way, I'm going to show you a little trick here, okay? It turns out that, that if we look at all the possibilities of me driving along and hitting this particular traffic light, okay, and we're, and we're, talk, and we're only talking about this one particular traffic light that we've been talking about uh, in this same problem all along here, okay? Um, if we're talking... There we go. If we're talking about uh, all the different ways of hitting this one traffic light, okay, um, Whoa, whoa, guys, whoa. I just realized this problem is way more complicated than I, I originally remembered. I forgot that because it says at least once, not only are we concerned about uh, stopping on every day of the week, we can't just write out five different ways. We also have to say, what if we stop on Monday and on Tuesday at this light and then don't stop on 
uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, and again, every possible way of arranging the, 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 the red light, okay? The red light could be on Friday and Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. Or we could have the possibility of not stopping uh, on uh, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. That's at least once, okay? So there is many, many, many ways that we could stop at least once during the week. Here's the secret, though. Here's the really cool thing. There is only one way of never stopping during the week, and that goes like this. Now, that is simply magic, my friends, because we know the probability of not stopping at a red. So, um, it turns out that if we take this probability and we add it to all these others, all these other, I don't know if there's dozens or hundreds, but um, these many, many other ways of, of stopping at traffic lights during the week. If we add all of these to this probability of never stopping, okay, then we get one. They, out, they the, All the probabilities must add up to 100%. If I look at all the probabilities of all the things that could possibly happen, they must all add up to 100%. Okay? And, uh, and if that's the case, then if I add all these guys up, I must also add this guy in to get a full 100%. So here's the thing that's super cool is what this means is, is if all I do is want the probability of uh, of at least I'm gonna see if I can write this out at least one red okay at least one red during the week I can use the complement rule and the complement rule will go like this um, I will calculate what is the prob what is one minus the probability of getting uh, not no reds for every day of the week. Now, I have to be careful how I write this out because I was going to write five no reds, but it's not really five no reds. It's it's no red times no red times no red times no red. So uh, eh, maybe I could, mm, I'm a little leery about how to write this out. I think I'm going to write it out with this notation so that it's really obvious that we're saying to the power of five, okay, and then uh, and so then when we go to get this answer, let me do, throw a splash of different color in here. Um, we will then say uh, one minus whatever the probability of no red is. Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, maybe that five should go on the outside. Let's make this technically correct. There we go. So we'll take the probability of getting a red. You can get rid of this. Get rid of this. The probability of getting a red. We'll take that whole thing and we'll raise that to the power of five. And so in this case, the probability of not getting a red, I believe we said was 0.39. So let's go ahead and put in 0.39, and we will raise that to the power of five, and that will get us an answer. And, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys uh, several different problems that are like some of the ones that I've presented in this video. And uh, I'll, I'll have you guys work on them together. Um, uh, let's see. But before I let you go from this video, you're going to have to get me this answer. And then you're going to go ahead and answer these four questions here. And I'll give you a space to enter each one in Edpuzzle.